It would be. Now, let's, I, don't, I don't have any doomsday music. I've got more optimistic music, let's be clear, because we think that 30 level, which was the pre-crisis, the great financial crisis, that should be a big area of support, right? And you talk about March. I mean, I've got my Xavier pin. I'm a Xavier fan, Sweet 16. So good things can happen in March. The last 20 years, stocks have bottomed in March, right? 2003, 2009, 2020. We get it. Negative things. But things were worse those times. Sentiment is actually about as negative now as it was some of those previous times, Kelly. So hmm. let's just remember that. One final thing here. April, in a pre-election year, has been higher 17 the last 18 times. That's 94% of the time. April's higher in a pre-election year. Lots of other factors, yes, but with that XLF at a big level, with negativity high, with some potential positive seasonals, s and still up 4% for the year. s and positive for the month of March. Things aren't great, but there are some positives out there, Kelly. Paul, do you see it sort of the same way? So I think Brian brought up some, uh, Brian brought up some great points. Just the fact is that uh, the market, the financials are down like 14% over the last two weeks. The S&P is you know, down a percent or two. Mm -hmm. So the, the whole market isn't falling apart under the weight of the financials. Sentiment is very weak. And then, you know, just the leading indicators, uh, we focus on the semiconductors. Uh, the relative strength of the semiconductors hit a 52-week high this uh, this past Friday. Wow. And when you look back historically, that has always been a precursor for a positive market over the following 6 to 12 months. So that is, those are some of the positives. The negative side of thing, you've had high yield spreads come out a little bit. Mm -hmm. you've, you've had uh, breadth weaken a little bit here. And um, in, in that respect, those are things you want to watch. You've had a slight expansion in the number of new highs. But, I mean, overall, things are going to stay volatile here. J Secretary Yellen said things are contained. Right. We'll see. That's hopefully, hopefully that was, these were the last dominoes rather than the first dominoes. But um, even if that is the case, we'll probably see some uh, volatility going in the next few weeks. But if I were to come on and say this is the market's going to go higher from here, it's all over now, I think everyone would call me out for being a liar. Nobody knows. So we just have to play this out for, you know, for what it, you know, and watch it day by day and look at the signals that the market is, is, is giving us. Absolutely. One comment I, I sort of want you both to, to react to, and Ryan, I saw you tweet about this, but I've heard this from a number of people, both on, uh, whether it's Twitter, email, in per, you name it, and they say the stock market is the best economic forecaster that they know. So going back a couple of weeks when, you know, some of us were talking all doom and gloom, they were like, listen, I take my signal from the stock market and it's had a pretty good year. So here's my question. That's always true until it's not, right? And, and even during this little banking crisis, like it's held up relatively well. So how, can you just talk through the dynamic of the market itself, the stock market itself, or maybe if you want to go back to, you know, commodity something, and at least Paul, like he mentioned with the semiconductors, what do you think the market is telling us here um, aside from the normal seasonals that we see, like what are the things that to you are, are giving us a clearer read on what the next move might be? Yeah, I love what Paul said. I mean, semiconductors, 52 week high versus the S&P 500. You look, we haven't had a recession two years after that's happened in history. You got industrials, 5% from all time high. You got GE, not a recommendation of GE, but breaking out to five year highs. Industrials are one of the most correlated um, sectors to the market. So it's tough for us to think this big recession is coming when semiconductors, kind of the new transports, if you will, and industrials are strong. Again, things aren't perfect. That's why we're in this choppy range, honestly been in a choppy range for almost a year now from the first time the Fed cut rates. And one more thing here, the 210 yield curve inverted last year on April Fool's Day. We've been hearing how bearish everything's been because of this 210 inversion. We're not ignoring it, but just look at today's existing home sales, right? I mean, I've been hearing for a long time how weak the economy is. We're not seeing it yet. Now, mm -hmm. credit is coming back. It's going to be tighter. I mean, we, we get those things, Kelly, but the consumer is still pretty strong, in our opinion. And if the yields keep coming a little bit lower, the Fed obviously is going to have the pivot, as we've all talked about a yeah. lot here. Um, those are positives, we think.